In this video, I want to walk you through one of the projects I've been working on this week, and I want to show you some sound design slash processing slash mixing tips that I used in this project to make it sound more professional and just overall better. So let's go ahead and take a listen to a little bit of this beat, and then we'll get straight into the tutorial. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. You don't need to worry. I'ma keep on going. You don't need to worry. I'ma keep on going. What's up my producer friends, I'm David with AnotherMonsterProductions.com and this past week I've been working on some beats. This is one of the beats I'm currently working on. It's still sort of a work in progress, but I'm definitely really happy with the direction that it's going it's pretty much finished. So it's far enough along that I wanna show you some of the techniques, tips, processing, sound design type stuff that I did in this to help those of you out who are struggling with this type of stuff. So I've got an overall process of how I like to approach making beats, uh, specifically for artists here. So hip hop, pop, R&B, any sort of beat that you're gonna have a singer or a rapper, whatever on it, uh, you wanna make sure that you're leaving enough space for that individual to finish the track, turn it into a full song. And one thing that I was struggling with a lot when I first started out, and I know a lot of you guys are struggling with as well, is adding too much in sort of the, the instrument slash synth. So we'll have a chord progression, we'll have a melody, we'll have a counter melody, and we'll have all these things sort of piling up where when you're finished with the beat, it's just too much going on. Uh, the singer or the artist there's no space in the frequency spectrum for them. And there's also just too many counter melodies going on already where it's hard for them to get in there. So the idea is you wanna keep things more simple than you intuitively want to, at least in that sort of space of, of the, the mix. So we're keeping the foundation very simple and then we're filling it in with all these little spices uh, to make it more interesting to listen to for the listener. Now, what I wanna do with this tutorial is I wanna actually get in here and explain in a, a, a lot of detail exactly some of the processes that I do, some of the sound design type stuff in order to really make this beat more professional and just overall better. So this might be a really long tutorial. For that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and leave some timestamps in the description of this video, just in case you wanna skip over something that I'm talking about. But if you're struggling with this stuff, I highly recommend that you watch the whole video. I think this is gonna be really helpful for you. So with all that being said, Let's go ahead and get straight into it. So I wanna kind of go over this beat from start to finish and explain a little bit of my thinking behind it and just sort of my creative process, my workflow, how I go about doing this. So first thing I did was I created this chord progression. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the bass line because I added the bass onto it. So this is what we have going on here. And what I did here was uh, I had this sort of chord progression idea, which I created, and then I brought it into Flex, and I just browsed through Flex until I found this preset that I liked. This one is called ePiano Life. It's in this library, and I don't remember exactly if I did any sort of tweaking with the delay, reverb, any of this stuff. It's possible that I did, but when I was happy with the way that this preset sounded, I went ahead and moved on to our bass line. Uh, I wanted to layer a bass along with this synth. And so I used GMS. I actually used one of my presets. This one's called Dirty Bass. And I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video to all my GMS presets if you want to download them. Got some pretty good stuff in there. So this bass is just a preset I made. Now, surprisingly, as far as processing goes, I did very little of this. I didn't do any processing to the main chords. I did do just a little bit to the bass, just the EQ and it's just a high pass filter here. So I'm filtering everything below 27 Hertz. 
So the next thing that I did and something that I love to do is to record my own voice and then just completely mangle it, destroy it, add distortion, uh, pitch it up, format shift, reverb, delay, all sorts of different stuff to make it completely unrecognizable as a voice, but turn it into sort of a really organic, cool sounding instrument. And here, I'll show you an example of that. So this is a very common technique that you'll hear a lot in, uh, I associate it with future bass, but it's really, it's it's become really popular in pop music, R&B, all sorts of different genres. And it's just a really cool thing that you can experiment with. You don't have to make something exactly like that. Uh, you can get super creative and do all sorts of weird stuff. But what ended up happening was I actually recorded a vocal and I was planning to do something kind of like that, what I just showed you. And then it actually turned out turned into a hook. Uh, I actually ended up recording like a full hook for this track. So I'm gonna go ahead and break down the main hook for you of this. So that sounds like this. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. So the first thing that I did with this hook was I brought it into new tone and I just locked in my vocals, made sure that everything was in key and then re-exported it back into my playlist. And then I started doing some processing. So this is the main vocal here. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. Let's go ahead and take off all the processing so you can hear it dry. You don't need to worry. So it doesn't sound all that great. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. You don't need to necessarily have the best voice to do this. Uh, you just need to have a good ear and be able to fix it with new tone and then also do some processing, some layering, stuff like that. So the first thing that I did was I added an EQ on it and this is just a high pass. So I'm getting rid of some of these uh, bass frequencies. I'm high passing to 141 hertz. You don't need to worry. And then I added an OTT on it, which looks like this. So the depth's at 17%. The high band is, I think, left where it was. The mid band, I brought down a little bit. And then the low band, I brought down. Uh, so you can kind of see the settings there. That sounds like this. You don't need to worry. And the OTT has a very distinct sound. So it's a multiband compressor. It makes everything sound very compressed, but it also sort of adds this high-end shimmer, which is something that you hear a lot in uh, professional sounding stuff. It's got this sort of expensive mic quality to it, I guess. So adding the OTT really makes the vocal sound a lot more expensive, in my opinion. You don't need to worry. You don't need to worry. You don't need to worry. And then next I added a little bit of reverb. Uh, I believe it was just a default setting reverb within FL Studio. This is the Fruity Reverb 2. And then I just tweaked it a little bit. The high cut is at 4K Hertz. The low cut is at 300 Hertz. Uh, delay is at 41 milliseconds. Size looks like it's right around the middle, 50. The decay is at 1.5 seconds. The wet knob is at 50%. So nothing too crazy going on there. That's gonna sound like this. You don't need to worry. Now, when it comes to vocals, reverb is not always the answer. You gotta be careful with reverb. Reverb can muddy up the vocals a lot of times and make it harder to understand what you're actually saying. It sort of depends on your goal with the vocal. For this particular genre and the vibe that I was going for, I definitely wanted reverb. And then finally, I added another EQ, which looks like this, cutting out a little bit of the low end, uh, cutting out a little bit of these mids here. You don't need to worry. And then again, doing a little bit of a high shelf there, not much. Because uh, we've, we've already got the OTT going on, but just a little bit more high shelf to give it that sort of sparkle, expensive taste that I'm talking about. You don't need to worry. I'm going to keep on going. So that's the final process, like main vocal sound. Now, this is actually what I was experimenting with first before layering that with it. Um, and this was going to be sort of what I was talking about in the beginning, where it's not even necessarily like an actual vocal that you can understand. I was planning on like completely destroying it. Uh, but this is what I came up with. You don't need to worry. worry. I'm gonna keep on going. And I should probably actually go ahead and show you guys uh, the original vocal that I had sounded like this. You don't need to worry on your own. I'm gonna keep on going, baby, go. And I cut out those last phrases to come up with what we have now. So that just goes to show you, you know, you can record something and chop it up and get creative with it. Music production is all about experimentation. Okay, so let's go ahead and mute everything here. We'll take a listen to it dry. You don't need to worry. So that's what it sounds like dry. And basically what I did was I brought the pitch up an octave here and then I added some M auto pitch. You don't need to worry. And basically what I'm doing here is a formant shift. 
So this plugin is a free plugin. It comes in a bundle of actually a ton of free plugins. I did a video where the bundle was included in the video. If you guys are interested in checking that out, there should be something that pops up on the screen now and I'll try and leave a link in the description as well. But anyway, I like this plugin because it has just a format shift knob, very easy to use. And then it has some other cool effects within it as well. So with the format shift at negative 7.78, sounds like that. You don't need to worry. And then you can kind of hear there's like some weird stuff going on down here. Uh, so I went ahead and added this EQ. You don't need to worry. And that gets rid of a little bit of that sort of weird stuff that you can you kind of hear, hear there. Uh, so I want to add another one. Um, this one is at uh, 261 hertz. So another high pass filter here. You don't need to worry. And that pretty much gets rid of that, that weird stuff that you're hearing. Uh, and then I added a bad tape on it. You don't need to worry. Not really a whole lot going on with this. Uh, I did mess with the color, a little bit of shake and wow, uh, a little bit of saturation and um, a little bit of bit crushing here as well. That's what the harm is. I tried adding a fruity fast distortion on it, but I ended up not liking it. So I had that muted, but then I added a fruity limiter on it. You don't need to worry. So just doing a little bit of compression here. You can see I'm in my compressor. You can pause the video and take a look at the settings if you're interested. I mix super quiet, which is why the threshold is as low as it is. It's at like negative 40.6, but it's not doing that much compression. You don't need to worry. worry. I'm gonna keep on going. going. You can kind of see how much compression is going on there. Then I added a reverb on here. You don't need to worry. worry. So we got a super big reverb going on here. Uh, high cut is at 2.1K Hertz. Low cut is at 33 hertz. Delay is at 70 milliseconds. Decay time is at 4.5 seconds. Dry wet is at uh, 70%. And then I went in here and I did a little bit of, uh, I guess, parallel processing. So we have this dry wet knob inside FL Studio on the mixer. So I'm taking out a little bit of the reverb there and we are at uh, like 44%, somewhere in there. You don't need to worry. So next I have a Fruity Delay 3. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. going. You don't need so what we have going on here is a ping pong delay. Uh, you can see I've got it pretty wide. I brought the tone down quite a bit. Uh, we're at 78.7%. Also brought the wet down to 41.7% and everything else should be pretty much default settings. Went ahead and added an OTT on here. You can see I'm at 27% depth. So the high band, I left where it was. Middle band, I brought down a little bit. Low band, I brought down even more. You don't need to worry. You don't need to worry. You can hear how it adds that sort of sparkle that I was talking about before. And then I added a destructor on it. You don't need to worry. And this was just to have a filter effect, which I used for an automation clip. So together, those two things sound like this. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. Already starting to have a pretty nice layered sound there. The third thing that I added was this. You don't need to worry. So this is a layer to fill out the low end a little bit more. So that is this one here. Uh, so the first thing that I did here, I'll go ahead and take all this off. You don't need to worry. So it's just the main vocal again. I went ahead and added a fru fruity stereo shaper here uh, to widen it out. You don't need to worry. So a widening effect there, stereo shaping. Uh, and then I added an M auto pitch with the format shift again, and I brought up the width here. You don't need to worry. Then I added an EQ, another high pass filter. You don't need to worry. And we're at 111 hertz. Then I added another EQ with this sort of shape here. You don't need to worry. So I'm cutting out some of those low mids there. This was starting to sound a little bit muddy to me with everything mixed together. So first of all, I brought this first band all the way down, negative 18 dBs, that's at 122 hertz. I brought this band down to negative two decibels at 136 hertz. And then I brought this band down to one po negative 1.9 dBs at 294 hertz, and then everything else is flat. So I didn't want to add any delay or reverb or anything on that one, it's just sort of a layer. And then finally, I added this fourth layer only for this part of the chorus. I left it out in the beginning here. So you can hear these three things together along with this. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. And then I added this last one to just fill it out even more when the actual chorus hits. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. So this last layer sounds like this. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. 
All right, so that is this one here. So basically what I did once again was I pitched this up an octave here, and then I brought it into the M auto pitch, did the formant shift. So brought it down negative 5.95 on the formant shift. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. And then I added a fruity stereo shaper on it as well uh, to widen it out even more. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. So then all this stuff together. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep on going. Okay, so just so you guys know, at this stage, I've added sub, main chords, and vocals. And I've spent probably a couple hours already on just these things. And I just, I when I do this, I go ahead and process everything and I'm trying to make it sound as finished, as polished as possible as I go. Next thing that I do is I start to add some uh, snaps, percussion, sort of drum elements. And so, I added this, which is a click. Need to worry. This is a percussion sound that's in my Monster Samples 2020 Trap Edition, which I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to get that. Uh, it's for sale on my on my store on my website. But actually, both of these sounds together are are from that kit. Uh, this one was a piece of ice. And then what I did here was I just added a little bit of EQ, uh, looks like that, and a little bit of reverb. And then again, with the dry wet knob here, just brought that down a little bit. And then this hit here, again, the piece of ice, and then the percussion hit with no reverb on it. Then I layered this percussion hit with an actual snap. Started bringing in the kick. So let's go ahead and take a listen to everything together that we have so far. So I went ahead and chopped up the original vocal, just did a little quick hit there. Again, you know, we're talking about all these little tiny things that are just gonna make it more interesting. So little stuff like that, uh, it just fills up that extra space because there's not really a whole lot going on here. It's just a kick. The kick is very spaced out, not really a whole lot going on with that. And then the snap and then the sub, the chords, which are like super spaced out. So then again, to fill out a little bit more space, make it a little bit more interesting, I added this pitched vocal here. Uh, and we also added a reverse vocal at some point. So the reverse vocal is again, just another sort of textural thing. How I went about doing this was I created just a little vocal hit on the beginning of, of whatever this phrase, probably this one, probably this main one here. I'm gonna keep. And I just cut off the I'm or it might have been. You don't need. It might have been the U. I might have cut off the U. Had like a super heavy, like wet reverb that just hit. So it was like U, and then the reverb hit, bounced it down, and then reversed it. And so the reverse makes it sound like this. So then we have this pitch vocal, uh, which I've previously showed you. So here, let me go ahead and take all this stuff off. So I believe that vocal is actually pitched up two octaves at this point. And then I added distortion. And then some reverb. And actually, as you can hear, so this was the bounce down vocal that already had reverb delay and various other stuff on top of it. So I'm adding these processes on top of the already processed sound. So distortion, EQ, or reverb, I'm sorry. Uh, reverb looks like this. EQ, which... I guess I didn't do anything with the EQ, and then I added a destructor as well. And so the destructor is the filter, which is giving it this like background vocally filter sound. So love adding the filter on a vocal like this to add some sort of like textural background type stuff. So let's listen to what we have so far. You don't So as you can probably hear, I did the same similar, I did a similar thing with this high pitch vocal here uh, where I bounced it down, reversed it, and that's what this one is coming in. It's a reversed. And then I had to add some uh, reverse stuff and some percussion in the drums. Again, you know, little tiny textural stuff that is just makes it more interesting. I like to add little things on the ends of phrases. So we have this sort of uh, four bar phrase, bar one, two, three, four, 
and it wraps it up. And so you add just some cool stuff at the end of like on the fourth bar of the phrase, the end of the phrase, and it can make it a lot more interesting. So this stuff definitely helps. And this fill was just a Cymatics fill uh, from one of their packs that I got, which I added a ton of reverb on. So I had this one reverb and then I have another reverb and I automated the second reverb. So that when that hits and the reverb cuts out, I wanted a little bit less reverb cutting through there. So I'm just automating the dry wet on the mixer here. So I realize this video is turning less into tips and more into me just sort of walking you through the project, but I hope you're okay with that. Uh, we're gonna keep going here. The next sort of tip, if you wanna say that I wanna talk about is the guitar here. This was the other sort of main part of the verse that really brought the verse together. Oh, and I didn't even add in the white noise there yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and add in the white noise as well. And we'll take a listen to the whole verse that as is finished. So you can start to hear how like this verse is excruciatingly simple. It's literally dun 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 bass synth and then a guitar hit and then just adding these little tiny textural stuff is just I mean it, it sounds completed it's just missing a vocalist you know that's all it's missing really and there's plenty of space for a vocalist to come in here and sing on this so i'm getting a little bit sidetracked here let's reel it back and talk about this guitar so the guitar that i used was a loop that i found in uh the chill wave melody loop cymatics pack so i'm going to go ahead and take all the processing off of this guitar and just play you the loop And I wanna point out that the original loop was at 110 BPM. So I slowed this down. I probably changed the uh, pitch of it. So it's not exactly the actual loop, but pretty close. Uh, so then I chopped the loop up. I went ahead and uh, chopped it up and turned it into essentially this. So then I added a stereo shaper on it. Next, I added a fruity fast distortion. I believe the preset that I used here was, if you go to presets, it's the fuzz preset. And then I just tweaked it a little bit. If you wanna pause the video, look at the settings, you can do that. Then I added some reverb. And then I added another uh, Fruity Delay 3, which looks like this, another ping pong delay. Went ahead and made it super wide. And then I added a bad tape. So again, with this plugin, I'm adding a little bit of bit crushing, a little bit of saturation, changing the color a little bit, and then a little bit of this sort of warp effect that you hear with tape. So you could use like isotope vinyl to get this effect where it's like going in and out of tune. Then I added another reverb. Then I added this effects which is a stereo effect. So this is a factor. I have a tutorial on this plugin on the channel. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of the video if you guys wanna check that out. But the stereo effect gives a sort of binaural effect where it makes things sound far away and then you can also pan it left and right. So that's kind of what I have going on here. I'm making it sound farther away from you and then panned off. And then I added this auto pan onto it as well to make it go back and forth in the stereo spectrum. And then I went ahead and layered another guitar on it, which is the exact same thing. It's just pitched up an octave. And then I just rooted this guitar to the other one. So it's got all the same processing on it. So a lot of cool sound design tips within that guitar there. The last thing that I just want to kind of mention here is this white noise. Uh, white noise is extremely useful when it comes to filling out things in the mix. In this instance, I'm using it as sort of a sweeping, sweep down, sweep up effect, almost like a crash. So definitely a cool technique to use if you're not already doing that. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the chorus. I'm just gonna unmute everything at this point, and I'm just gonna kind of walk you through some of the stuff that I did here. So first of all, I have this new snare that comes in. You don't need to worry. I'm gonna keep 
And if you're listening with headphones, you can probably hear the snare actually is very stereo. And I actually did a little bit of processing to the snare, which is kind of unique, not something that I would normally do. Here, let's take a listen to it without any processing. So you'll, you'll definitely be able to hear this if you're listening on headphones. The right speaker has the hit, the left speaker has the different sound. It's sort of this like, like, rever like almost like a reverb tail type sound. And it was so spread out that to me, it was just a little bit too much. Like I really loved the way this thing sounded, but it was just too spread out, too stereo. And I'm not layering this with anything. So I, I didn't have like the, I guess, luxury of having like a mono snare or clap or whatever layered along with this to kind of fill it out. So what I did was I, br I brought in a Maximus and Maximus has actually has the ability to, it's a multi-band compressor, so you can take one of the bands and you can actually mess with the stereo separation only on that band. So what I did here was uh, I found the mid band was sort of the sweet spot of where I wanted the signal to be more merged or more mono. So I brought it 61% merged, uh, which basically means that it's is approaching more of a mono sound. and right there to me was the sweet spot of where you still had that stereo separation in the snare, but it sounded a little bit more centered and a little bit less just wonky and weird. So you can kind of see here, I did a little bit of panning as well. I panned it this way because as you can kind of probably see on this meter here, I'm actually still getting a little bit more signal out of the right than the left. So I panned it to the left a little bit just to kind of even that out. And I was pretty happy with the final result here. Keep on going. You don't need to run me. I'ma keep on going. You don't need to run me. So I've also got some fills and various things going on here. So again, this is another cymatics fill. I think I got it from that same pack that I took the other tom fill from, and I layered uh, a cluck on top of it. Which again, this sound is from my Monster Samples 2020 Trap Edition. And then I just added a bunch of reverb on that and I added uh, another destructor to filter out the frequencies here. So actually, as far as processing goes on this, I did an EQ, which cut out a little bit of those lower frequencies, added a stereo shaper again, and then added a destructor on it, which I have a filter going on. And then I'm layering this fill with this cluck here and I added a lot of reverb on it. So cool little fill there. You don't need to run me. I'ma keep on going. You don't need to run me. I'ma keep on going. You don't need to run me. And then finally I added another layered synth on here, which you can probably hear. Nothing too crazy going on with this synth. It's just a synth that I created in Serum. Uh, you can kind of see what's going on here. added a little bit of reverb on it. And then as you can probably hear, kind of with the going in and out of tune, added another bad tape, a little bit of saturation, a little bit of color, wow, shake, uh, and some more bit crushing effect. Just a very small amount there. It looks like I was experimenting with some isotope vinyl as well, but doesn't look like I kept that on there. Uh, but I did add this destructor, which again, it was just for an automation effect on the last chorus where I have it sweep in here. So not to repeat myself too many times, but you know, another little tiny thing that I added in one place of the song to make it more interesting to listen to, you know? So that's about it for this video. Uh, I know this sort of turned into more of me just walking through my entire project, but I really hope that it was helpful. If it was, please let me know in the comments down below and be sure to hit the like button. Uh, all the comments, like buttons helps the YouTube algorithm and helps me continue to grow the channel, which is all very good for you, me, and everyone in the world. And if you wanna take this a step further and help me grow even more, then I would be greatly appreciative if you would hit the share button on this video and go ahead and share this video with however many producer friends you have out there who you think would benefit from watching this tutorial. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's gonna let you know anytime I release videos in the future. Right now I'm doing tutorials about once a week and those usually come out on Friday or Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions about anything or tutorial requests, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at anothermonster1. Also, if you feel like you're really struggling with music production, sound design, anything in between, and you feel like you just need a little bit of extra help, I am doing one 
one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website at anothermonsterproductions.com. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to sign up for that. And while you're there, be sure to take advantage of the free stuff I'm giving away in the description of this video as well. I've got a sample pack and an ebook, which you can download for free. You just need to enter your email address and I'll send that stuff over to you. And as always, I will see you in the next video.